Atlantic Records has denied cooking the books for their artists. Telling TMZ, Atlantic Records has never used bots for any of our artists. Atlantic, I know y'all already reached out. And, you know what I mean? I might just let y'all lie continue. But you know I could provide a 100,000% proof that y'all paid out invoices to people who were faking streams. This was the damage control that Atlantic Records did, an exclusive TMZ information drop. The music industry, in particular Warner Records, which Atlantic is a subsidiary of, has had one nightmare of a week when it comes to their artists, but the worst yet is being exposed for faking views, likes, and comments, allegedly. This spread to popular rappers like Lil Uzi Vert and Roddy Rich, but it all started with one tweet about Don Tolliver. A Twitter account with the handle Fitz Bryce sent out the following tweet on November 24th at 1.17 p.m. Don Tolliver, or more likely Cactus Jack, is shamelessly botting fake YouTube views and comments on his new single, and it's painfully obvious. I would soon after quote this tweet, but began getting mentions in my notifications that people couldn't see the original tweet. I went, looked back, and saw that this guy's account had been suspended. This was a bit odd, considering the fact that I had seen this Twitter account many times before, and he would never tweet anything out of the rules, offensive, or ban-worthy in the slightest. So this got me wanting to dive in even more. I sent out my own tweet, making sure I didn't make any direct accusations. And it read, Go to Don Tolliver's most recent music video, sort comments by new, and keep scrolling. Let me know how many real comments you find. I went on to elaborate and make another point. Uzi's video is facing a similar issue, partially because he's trending number one, but we know Uzi's song is a hit. It has 60 million streams on Spotify at the time and being talked about everywhere. Don Tolliver, on the other hand, that is not the case. I even have a video clip that I'll be scrolling down for you guys right now from that day's comment section. That video is several minutes long of nothing but emoji comments from random accounts that haven't even commented on any videos before and are from the complete opposite side of the world. But let's take a deeper dive into this music video for Don Tolliver before we move on to Roddy Rich and Lil Uzi Vert. The music video in question here is Don Tolliver's Do It Right. The video, as I'm making this one, is sitting at 7.8 million views on YouTube, with 106,000 likes and with 24,000 comments. It's important to note these stats because this is six days after the music video was released on YouTube. In the first day, this music video had 7.1 million views, and in the second day, it went up to 7.8 million views. Ignore the fact that it says second day and third day in those screenshots. This goes by date. That's because it rolls over. So if the video released at 11 p.m., the first 24 hours will be considered two days because it rolls over to a new date. Remember the views I said the video currently has? Yes, still 7.8 million. Four days later, after it initially hit 7.8 million. Which is absurd for nearly any video on YouTube, and especially for a music video. But wait, there's more. Remember the comments? Day one, Fitz Bryce screenshot showed us it had 7.1 million views and 22k comments with 52k likes. Okay, well in the video that I recorded, which was on November 24th at night, it had gotten 700,000 more views to bring it to 7.8 million, but it gained 2,000 comments and 32,000 likes to bring it to a counter of 84,000 likes. But the views have not changed since that day, and it's been almost four days later, so nothing should have changed too much with these three stats, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Somehow, despite the views not changing, if anything, it is lost views, I've been hawking this, trust me. The likes have jumped another 22,000 to 106k, and the comments have remained unchanged with 24k. Now explain that to me. How can you jump 22k likes without gaining any comments on the video or any views? The video has been stuck at 7.8 million for over 3 days, and a music video with this type of view velocity just compounds and gets bigger and bigger as we'll show later on. Hell, if you look at the comment section right now in Sort By New, you can see these same type of comments that are just one letter, one emoji spammed, spamming a letter over and over. 
by accounts that don't even seem like real human beings when you look into their profiles. What is interesting though, and a new development, is that this Don Tolliver music video is now trending at number 33 on the top 100 music videos global, official YouTube music charts. Yes, you got that right. Don Tolliver is in company with his label mate Lil Uzi Vert, who's number 26 on that list, but also with global stars like Shakira, Jungkook from BTS, Bad Bunny, Rima, Selena Gomez, Blackpink, and many more. Does that seem like it makes sense to you when the only conversation that anybody was having about this new Don Tolliver song was whether or not the music video was botted with views, likes, and comments? If they were botting this engagement, which I'm not saying they were, Don Tolliver is clearly one of the biggest stars in the music game right now, not just in the United States, but also in India, Thailand, and Malaysia too. If they were botting, then it clearly worked because now the video is on a global chart that'll generate actual real views. The biggest issue that Atlantic came across here is that Fitz Bryce, or whoever found this first, he's just the first one I saw, spotted the discrepancies very early. If this was 10 days, or even 2 weeks later, everything would look like it checks out. Nobody would really sort comments by new, and they would have the veil they could hide under, which is, when your music video gets high on trending, you're going to end up with body looking comments like that. It happens to everyone. So there would be no way to really pinpoint it. Although, Don Tolliver's team, and I'm guessing his management team, gave a statement to TMZ saying, A rep for Tolliver tells TMZ, Just like other artists and their teams who have been attacked with botting reports, we are both deeply upset and concerned. To be absolutely clear, neither Don or anyone on his team has had any involvement here. They add, while we conduct our own investigation into the allegations, yeah, we're going to investigate ourselves, okay, we urge Atlantic Records to do the same, to protect the integrity of not only the roster of artists, but the reporting metrics. We look forward to sharing more as we obtain more information. Next up is Don Tolliver's Atlantic label mate, Roddy Rich, who released a music video, Twin, with Lil Durk on November 21st. So over a week ago, and it's sitting at 5.9 million views right now with 78,000 likes and 10k comments. Unlike Don Tolliver, Roddy Rich is a way more successful rapper who has had bigger hits and bigger albums. Lil Durk is also one of the biggest rappers in the game right now, so it would make sense if they got this many views in a week. But it doesn't seem to make too much sense because it was actually the inverse of what happened with Don Tolliver's music video. On the first day, Roddy's video got 405,000 views. Okay, that seems really reasonable and believable. It went up to 609,000 views. All right, an increase of 104,000 views in a day seems totally above board. Now, what in the world is this graph? In four days, it got more than 5 million additional views to put it at 5.9 million. That doesn't add up to me. And it seems to not add up to the commenters on the video too. Some saying, and this is just the fourth day of it being released, not even the full seven. 1 million, now 4.4? The hell? Fake views plus fake comments. Don't believe me? Go down and see for yourself. Man, how the hell? This was on 1 million like five hours ago and now it's 4.5 million views. Something ain't adding up. Damn, they allegedly did it like that? Not even drip feeding the views? Come on now, that's amateur hour. They might have to make some adjustments to that Roddy Rich $500,000 booking fee now going forward considering the real views that he's able to pull. The last we're going to look at is Lil Uzi Vert's I Just Wanna Rock. This music video is currently trending at number one on music and has been on there for several days now. The video views continue to go up. If you sort by newest comments right now, you see tons of real comments and barely any body comments, which to be clear was not the case the other day when I checked because the new comments were about 50% spammy looking and 50% real comments. However, just looking at the graph, day one, 1 1.2 million views. Day two, 3.8 million views. Day three, 5.4 million views. Up to day seven with 11 million views. The rate at which the views are increasing makes sense. The song has over 65 million streams on Spotify now. It was everywhere on TikTok before it officially released. It's an actual hit song. Do I think Atlantic Records had an incentive 
to mix a ton of potentially botted views and engagement with the real views and engagement to get Uzi high up on trending? Yes, I think they had an incentive to do that. But unlike the two previous songs we looked over, it doesn't change the fact that this song is an actual hit that is resonating with the people, being talked about, and also spread organically. But why? It's important to talk about incentives here. All three of these music videos required a pretty decent budget. They had to buy beats for all of these songs. All of this money dumped in. Where is the profitability if the views and streams are faked? Because it would cost more money to buy the fake streams than getting paid for them would return. If you even get paid, since a lot of these views get sussed out and removed over time. This is a money sink. And the only incentive I can think of is keeping up appearances. Since Warner Music Group, the parent company is a publicly traded company, to keep investors happy, they would show increased profits quarterly. And the two ways to do that is to either increase profits or decrease operational costs, or both. Which includes anything from firing a ton of people, letting a lot of artists go if they want a lot of money to extend their deal, shelving any and all artists that aren't generating a lot of money. And the difference with record labels is unlike any business where, or let's say it's an application or product seller or service provider, they have a catalog of music that generates them money from decades ago passively. My theory here, if any of this is true, is that if the label's faking views, sales, comments, it isn't necessarily to make money from these songs, but to keep up appearances. Because if Roddy Rich can't do a million in three days anymore, then he looks terrible, which is what happened. Then the spike in views came. It looks like all of their current assets aren't worth much anymore. And the issue with being a public company is PR is everything and can cause shareholders to sell or buy depending on the press. Your big time artist flopping right now? That's not a good look. God forbid fake view allegations going viral? That's a nightmare. So the idea is they just spend money to keep appearances up for their biggest acts while having cut costs all over and allowing their massive catalog to just continue generating profit year over year without much, if any, work at all. That's the only way that this would make sense to me.